Hello fellow WordPress developers, it's Mark here from High Rise Digital and in this WordPress tips and tricks video what I want to show you is some of the debugging functions that I use when developing for WordPress that just makes life a little bit easier and makes the output of debugging a little bit more easy to read so I thought I'd just show you these now. So let's have a look at an example and here is a, a website running the 2020 theme, nothing special going on. And often in your debugging, if we just flip back to my code here, you might want to uh, dump out a variable so that you can tell what that variable holds at this point in time. Now there's loads of ways you can do this if you've got like a full-on debugging uh, process. It'll probably be able to do this in the browser and using an IDE and so on. But, you know, lots of us just like to use the old var dump uh, just to see what's actually going on here. So if I just var dump the actual post object and save this, flip back to the browser and refresh, it does exactly what, what we said, but it looks awful. It's hard to read and hard to understand what's actually going on here. Um, we've got an object, it's got some elements in the object, but it's very hard to read and very hard to, to understand. So what I would recommend to you is just creating a wrapper function for var dump that basically makes that easier to read and easier to understand. So if we flip back to our uh, code editor here, um, what I've got usually on most sites that I run in the mu plugins folder, I have a debugging.php file. This is uh, anywhere I put debugging functions that I want to use in the code. And this file is um, git ignored. So you won't actually commit this to the repository and it won't actually get put onto the live site, etc. So I've created a function here called WP var dump um, and it accepts the parameters of the data that you actually want to dump out. So in my case here, it would be the post object and you can pass it a label as well. So that if you've got multiple ones of these on the screen, you can see which ones which by putting a label on it. Then I'm just going to start a div and I'm just going to give it a, a light gray background color and plenty of padding. Then we're going to check whether our um, label is not empty if we have a label, and if we do have a label, we're gonna output that with a H2 tag. Um, and then what we're gonna do after that is we're going to output the actual data, but we're gonna wrap it in pre-tags, and that means that it will be formatted and styled slightly neater uh, than if we don't wrap it in pre-tags. And you'll see the difference that we get now. So if I changed the var dump call to a WP var dump, um, and save and refresh, you will notice that that is now much neater and tidier and I can see exactly what's going on. What I didn't do was to add a label, so I'll just show you what that looks like. I could add a label in here. I'll just call it label. It needs to be a string, sorry. And we'll refresh again. And you can see that gets spit out at the top here. So it's a really nice way of making this more readable so that when you're debugging stuff, you can easily understand it. So that's one of the things that I'm uh, that you could do. The other thing um, is to use the WordPress debugging feature. So this feature that I'm going to show you uh, makes the use of the WP debug which you don't know, it's in a config file. This is the config file for WordPress. So what I've got down here is debug set to true so that WordPress will start logging uh, debugging data for us. And I've created a little function in my debugging one called HD write log. Now this is good for if you don't want to output information to the screen. So perhaps you're working quickly on a live site and you need to debug something. So you want to write that um, dump, if you like, that we had in the previous example to a log file rather than spitting it out on the screen. You don't want all the clients that might be looking at that website to actually see that. So here, I've got a function called write log and we're only going to do this if debug is turned on to true. And then we're saying if the logging at the item that I want to log is an array or an object, then we're going to use the error log function and we're going to print that error log function so that it actually looks nicer. If not, we'll just error log it anyway. And what this does is it writes this to a file called WPD, sorry, called debug.log inside your WP content folder, which is this file here. I've already got some items in there, so I'll just delete those and save it. Then if I go back to my file on the here and change this for HD write log, it doesn't accept a label, so I'll have to remove that, but it could. Um, and then if I go and refresh the page, that should disappear. 
which it does. And then if I go back to my uh, code editor and into debug.log, you can see exactly the same content gets logged to this file instead of being logged to the screen. And it looks nice and neat. I can understand it. Um, I can make uh, use of it and really read it quite easily. So two simple ways in which you can improve the, the debugging in WordPress by creating two small functions that will help you. I hope you found that useful. If you did, I'd love you to hit that like button. If you've got any top tips for debugging in WordPress, then please leave them in the comments below. And if you want to hear more of me rambling on about WordPress hints and trip tips, then please consider subscribing to this channel. Anyway, for now, I'll see you next time.